time for some Telemann, don't you think? I can't believe we've got 20 odd videos in and we haven't played any Telemann yet. So now is the time. This is the Sonata in A minor. We're going to look at the second movement. And the edition I'm playing from is not a great one, actually. So I'm going to try and find you a link to a better one um, to put under the video. There are dozens of editions of this. So look out for one that is preferably not edited for the cello because um, all the bowing is upside down and the fingering is weird. There are plenty of reputable editions of this. I'll put you some information um, below the video. So let's see what happens then. Second movement coming up. <laughs> starters then isn't it I think the way you play the first note sets you up for the whole movement so if you play even if you play it really fast but with that kind of gluey bowing it just sets the wrong character I think so you want a real speed in the bow and a bit of a ping at the beginning so it's short but it's not stopped on the string so there's more energy at the front of the note than there is in the middle it's such a dramatic octave leap isn't it that be really tidy around the string cross get off the bottom E as quick as you can heading for the top top string then what you need another forward bow don't you in the second bar and that's a bit um potentially risky I think because there's there's a lot of movement and a lot of um, potential for clattering I think if you make it part of the end of the previous crotchet so the whole thing is just part of that gesture and if the crotchet hasn't used the entire bow and you don't aim to get back completely to the tip you can really help yourself out in there. So, this stuff, it sounds jolly impressive, doesn't it? Just practice with the bow. strings so it looks like you're working terribly hard and actually it's not as bad as it looks but you have to be able to do it evenly and you have to be able to feature the top note because this is not the most exciting thing is it we want to hear the chord change but you can't take time over it so you can't have Apart from making you seasick, it's going to really put your continuo player off as well. So you've got to do it just by kind of featuring that note with a bit more something, a bit more speed, or perhaps just by on the E, it's really noticeably taking some of the pressure off. I'm not looking for it to really stick out and for the E's to completely disappear. It's just by preference you need to favour the top notes in there. This I think is nicer up there than there. And here's a good place to shift sort of thing. The interest is in this and then this particularly that bit just a standard cadence isn't it here's the opening theme of and here's the end so don't make too much of it let's go from the top three four going on So back bow to start the semi quavers. Definitely use a four finger at the top. And that's the end, isn't it? 
before that sets off as a repeat. We've got to hear, but again, you can't take time over it because your continuum player will trip up. So you have to do it with weight or um, pressure or kind of presence of note. So if you throw the E away a little bit, but then you properly connect the bow to the string for the next three semiquavers, you'll spell out that idea without actually taking any time over it. And the feature of it the second time that it doesn't do that. So make sure you go right through to the end of that phrase. The fingering, I think, just sits under the hand for that. So this is bar five from after the semiquaver rest, after two. One, two. <laughs> So the end of seven, it's the same theme that we had in five. So I think make the same feature. And really deliberately power through there. Look out for that, I can't read the bar numbers. Ten. Chordal fingering between the G and the C. Bar there, the F sharp to the B. And again, it's such a feature, isn't it? That octave leap. Make something of it, don't just throw it away at the end. High energy stuff, this. This is the end of seven, coming in after four. Three and four. top and do the same again here and the same again so each time you're effectively buying yourself an extra finger to get that down so I started on a four I found it by putting the two on the top fret and then I know where the B is four four again on that, haven't you, the cadence. We'll think about that in a second. Shall we just try out this slinky fingering coming down here? This is the upbeat to bar 13. It goes three and four. Before it. You can really tell that 
know something is coming. And it turns out to be that opening theme, but a bit higher. Shall we try that from uh, 15 after the quaver rest? And we'll aim to go on when we get there this time. So after three, one, two, three. <laughs> at the top isn't it we shifted up to play the D up here in bar three we've got no choice in um, 21 you have to be up there so the G come down let's go from 19 that's a big triumphant theme here we go three four top and then putting the four down so let's do some of that um this is 23 23 how much bow do you need for the semi quavers here yeah it's just going to get really untidy but if you use it sounds a bit like a mouse doesn't it so we, we need enough bow to get a decent sound out there's plenty of time to make good contact with the string. Don't um, don't let it skate over the top. Make sure that this finger is is really working the string hard, so it's not skating. But just think about the amount of bow that you need to get a decent sound out of it. This is 23 after two, one and two. <laughs> So after you've found that, if you come back and put a three on the top fret, you can play all of that without changing position, and then come back again and put a four here. Then because there's, I think you have to put a trill on the cadence, I would come up here rather than, it's just a bit awkward there and then having to slur back across, so put a one on the C, and then you're up here for the end. Shall we go from, um, this is 27 after the quaver rest. So it's two and three. Move down. So although 
let's be a little bit subtle and not really hammer it out. I think you can make a feature. Just make sure it's really clear. Where is the bottom one? Could just go away a bit, I think, couldn't it? And then here we are back at the theme, and we're back at it backwards, but I'm not sure it matters. It's quite convenient for this. And I wonder whether um, 39, having had that bit that's quite bouncy, business-like quavers, if you like, at the cadence, whether these ones might just have a moment that's slightly more suave, rather than I've had enough by here of things that leap and, um, and bounce. I just want a little bit of something a bit more sophisticated. Shall we, shall we go from um, 31 after the crotchet rest? And let's aim to play on for a bit. So we're one, two, resonating um, as you go through. I would play this first semi-quaver with a four. Keep your G sharp down in there as long as you can, it just um, helps to smooth the cross um, onto the, between the A and the E string. And then like we did before, come back as soon as you've played that top crotchet. So the next bit all fits under your fingers. It was a C, wasn't it, before that bit. So here we're lower down, but take the opportunity to shift in the rest. And then... To, to make the difference between these slightly laid back and then this really hard working very laid back slightly manic it's quite hard to keep the, the tempo I think in there it can really help when there's a continuo part in and how about we go from um, 43 I'll count you in and we'll go from that second crotchet. And one. Then lay back. And again in the penultimate bar. Just short. It's just outlining chords isn't it for, for that cadence it's not a melodic thing don't work too hard definite trill on, on their final cadence starting on the upper note let's try the whole thing through at a nice sensible space for thinking sort of speed we can keep it lively without it necessarily going at breakneck speed can't we so let's try I'll count you in. So, three, four.
to play the continuo part um, and keep it in time when there isn't anybody to accompany. So what I'm going to do in order to be sure that I'm not causing you additional problems by having the continuo coming and going at different speeds, um, I'm going to play to a metronome and then but I'm going to play it through um, headphones so that all you will hear is me and you can play just with the continuo part, you haven't got the ticking crocodile going in the background um, and I will be sure that I am in time. So. We'll go a nice steady speed to start with. Sort of thing, nothing too ridiculous. I'll count you in. Um, see you at the end. One, two, three, four. new speed is this. 
And again, I'll count you in. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 